coming up on today's show. I think one of the words you use is really powerful is consolidated. Um, we tend to say as productivity experts not to engage in multitasking, but there are actually some good forms of multitasking. So today we're going to just talk about all kinds of life hacks. Well, oftentimes it's either home projects or work projects, and sometimes they take on more than they can handle. How to get more hours out of your day today on Keeping You Organized. Hello and welcome to Keeping You Organized. Today we are going to buy some time for you. Actually, you don't have to pay for it. We're going to give you some life hacks that help you get more out of your day. Wouldn't you just like to have an extra 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes? Well, we're going to get that for you if you stay tuned through the whole uh, broadcast today. So we're going to bring on our good friend, Lisa Montanero from lisamontanero.com. Lisa, we've got a, a big calling today. We're going to buy some buy some time for people, but they're not going to have to pay for it. What do you think? I like that. I love that. That's great. We're going to give away some time. Yeah. Well, who wouldn't want to have more than what they already have? I mean, and that's the reality of the situation is people only have 24 hours a day, so it's how they use it. So today we're going to just talk about all kinds of life hacks, uh, things that we can do to kind of um, get more time in our day. So now I'm sure there's probably some low hanging fruit out there that, uh, you know, we can... Uh, just kind of get right away and maybe uh, get on the scoreboard right away. What do you think? What are some of those easy things that we can do? Mm, easy things. Okay, let's think of some easy ones. Well, one of the first things may sound counterintuitive, but it's getting rid of, it's, it's creating what I call a not to-do list. So it's actually going back through all of your to-dos, either that you've written down or that you've put on your calendar or in a project management and saying, I'm not going to do that. Who am I kidding? It's not a priority. So it's sort of like a, either a priority session or I like to call it a not to-do list because it feels very freeing. <laughs> so it's sort of like do a quick glance and say, what can I take off my plate? Now you're assuming that people have a to-do list put together. Would, would a step <laughs> before if they don't have just maybe try to dump onto a piece of paper everything they think they have to do? Well, actually, let's go two steps back. So one of the first things to do is called a brain dump. And I know it's a horrible image, but it works well. So most people are walking around with all this mental clutter, you know, thinking of all the things they have to do, the tasks, responsibilities. So one of the best things you could do before you go to bed at night or when you first wake up in the morning is to take that content out of your head and dump it somewhere. And it can be an old fashioned list, you know, just go ahead, pen and paper, it works. Um, but you could also use a fancy app that people use nowadays, like Todoist or Asana. Uh, there's so many of them. Uh, but yeah, get it out of your head first and foremost, because if it's in your head, chances are you're not going to really get to it, which is not a good thing. Okay, now you work with a lot of people. You coach them on productivity, how to get more done. What are a few things that come to your mind, uh, again, thinking about this low-hanging fruit that you've seen on people's lists that maybe you've been on there a long time, they've, that they could just kind of uncheck right off. What, uh, what are some examples of things like that? So oftentimes it's either home projects or work projects. And sometimes they take on more than they can handle. So like a home project, like a man or a woman will say, you know, I'm going to do this home project. I'm going to, you know, restain the fence. And like a year goes by and they don't do it. And it's because it's too big of a project for them to actually handle. So they either should delegate that to someone else or get a team of people together like friends, family, and have a staining party. Um, but usually things like that are pretty big. And same thing at work. They go to a conference. They're really inspired and motivated. They come back with all the material and they say, I'm going to review all that conference material. And that's like a typical example of something that sits there. It's like a big pile. Um, and I tell them, just free yourself. Say that the content went in your head. You learned a lot of good things. You've already integrated into your work. And you don't need to go back and look at the five binders that you're not going to actually read again. So those types of things. Now, would you uh, suggest in that particular example that people maybe just uh, take the take the conference materials off the table and put them in a, like a folder and store them in your file drawer? And then, then at least you know you have them when you want to go back, even though you don't have to obsess about looking at them right now? I think that's a great question. I think it depends. And I would ask the, the client a few probing questions. I'd say, are you realistically ever going to go back and get these again? If not, pass them on to someone else. So send them to a different division or department that could benefit from them, a new entrepreneur that didn't get a chance to come to the conference. So I usually say, go ahead and pass it on, pay it forward, unless you have a really good like 75% chance that you're going to go back and access that content later on. 
Yeah, I remember my boss came back from a conference one day and just kind of piled a bunch of stuff on my desk. So he, he definitely <laughs> gained some time there. But uh, so, okay, let's, we're, you know, we're gonna, I'm going to keep a kind of a tally here. Uh, how many minutes would someone uh, maybe spend looking through conference material that they really didn't need to look through? Uh, and what can we, let's put that on our scoreboard here so we can gain some of that time. What do you think? Yeah. Well, it's funny because that one's large. I mean, if you decide that you're not going to stay in the fence, but you're just going to oversee that project or delegate it, you could save hours and hours. So this may not be the best example. Um, but a smaller example is like, let's say you were going to do a particular errand and you realize, you know, I'm not going to go do that errand. I'm going to buy my stamps online. I don't need to go wait at the post office. So that's a good example. So that might save you a good 15 or 20 minutes. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to put that down 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, yeah. That's by using online uh, postal versus driving to the post office. That's a really yeah, solid thing because, yeah, you know, we do that frequently, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's a simple one. Um, and there's lots of ways to do that. Delivery. So delivery in general, think like, what can I buy online or what can I have delivered to me rather than going and waiting online for it? And that probably could save a good uh, you know, quarter of an hour per day. Okay. Well, I like that. So uh, that's probably maybe another uh, 15 minutes. So we're up to about 30 right now. Boy, I'm feeling like I got all kinds of time and I'm only <laughs> buying my better, stamps right? online <laughs> and getting things delivered. Um, what do you see in people's routines uh, that, you know, that make you say, oh boy, if you just did this to things you're already doing, kind of like the, you know, the you know, postage is something maybe you don't buy every week, but I'm talking about right. maybe day-to-day -day things, you know, whether it be opening mail or, or, or things like that. What, uh, what are some things like that that maybe people do on a daily basis that could be either consolidated or, or more efficient? That's a great question. I think one of the words you use is really powerful is consolidated. Um, we tend to say as productivity experts not to engage in multitasking, but there are actually some good forms of multitasking. So like when I have a client that will say, I really wish I could work out more, but I also have these other responsibilities like meeting with a client or spending time with my kids. So I'll say, can you combine those? Can you have a walking meeting with a client? So can the two of you, you know, walk like we have a green belt here in my town. Can you walk the green belt for an hour and have a meeting with your client? Can you actually exercise with your kids? So you spend quality time with them. I know a lot of parents now are getting smart when the kids are doing their homework at the dinner table, the parents are opening the mail emptying the dishwasher and cooking the dinner, things they have to do anyway. So they're available for encouragement while the kids are doing their homework or they're available for questions. So yeah, think about a sort of good multitasking. Um, I tend to listen to language programs while I'm driving somewhere, like commuting to work, for example. So the more that you can integrate or consolidate your word, which I love, that's actually a great life hack. Um, so think of the good form of multitasking. Right, and actually, you know, uh, another term that gets thrown, another buzzword that gets thrown thrown around is like this co-working idea. And maybe that's yeah. what you're doing. You're you're you are multitasking, but you're also co-working. So the time with the kid is sitting doing the homework, and the time that you're cooking, you would have had to you know spend at least a half hour cooking and a half hour with them doing their homework. Now, when you've kind of got those together. Uh, you probably just saved another 30 minutes, wouldn't you think? Yeah, I would think so. And especially if you add in the exercise component also. Um, a lot of people in my town here in Davis, California, were very bike friendly. So a lot of people commute to work by bicycle. So that's another way to combine your exercise with your daily commute. And so I'd say those types of consolidations or good multitasking could easily save you about 30 minutes a day. Um, obviously, if you need to sit next to your child and do like, you know, trigonometry, <laughs> maybe you can't also be opening the mail and cooking. But, you know, by and large, if you just need to be present, uh, then, yeah, that's a great that's a great life hack. And I probably we could probably think of even more. But exercise, uh, daily chores and errands at home while your child's doing their homework. Uh, those are probably really good ones. And I would agree that they probably could save 30 to 45 minutes a day. Oh, I, and I love the idea of of doing those things together. How about like at the workplace, maybe once we're at the office, anything that you can think of uh, while we're at the office that we can either combine or do maybe a little more uh, efficiently. I'm thinking about, for example, email. It seems like yeah. you spend a lot of time opening email. Do you got any great life hacks on how to deal with email? Yeah, I do, but uh, they take a long time, but I'll give you some quick ones. <laughs> so one of them is to make friends with your delete button. I know that sounds so scary to people, but in this day and age, you know, most of the emails, you're going to be uh, CC'd, you're going to be copied on them, you're going to get later threads of the same conversation. It's going to sit in your delete 
or in your trash for a while, it's backed up on a system. You know, you could always go back into your sent folder. So I'm amazed how many people uh, use their emails in electronic filing cabinet and they just leave everything in their inbox and they don't think it's really a problem, but to go through all of those emails on a daily basis takes a lot of time. So I'd say make friends with your delete button and also just get better at efficient email. We have sort of this ping pong mentality now, like thanks, okay, sure, yes, I'll be there. You know, go ahead and write better emails. You know, actually put in the subject line what you want, what you mean, and uh, you know, don't send unnecessary emails. And I see that a lot in the workplace and that could save a lot of time for everyone. Because <laughs> you know, the ping pong emails means that everyone's getting them, which isn't great. Well, how about the the concept of, you know, how you store the emails that you that you want to keep? Uh, any suggestions yeah. on how you set up your inbox? Yeah, that's a great one. Um, I'm a big fan of folders and filters. So a folder would be to go ahead and set up a folder in your email system. So maybe the name of the five projects you're working on right now at work. And go ahead and if you need to keep those and have like a, a temporary archive while you're working on the project, drag them into the folder and they take them out of that precious inbox, like which is precious real estate. You don't want it to be cluttered up. And then a filter would be, um, it's also known as a rule, is stopping the email from coming into your inbox in the first place and directly sending it into a folder. So you set up a rule, like if an email comes from John Hunt or from Smead, it goes directly into my Smead folder, for example. So that's a great way to sort of, you know, bypass the inbox altogether. Well, I'm thinking that just those couple email tips right there are worth at least another uh, 30 minutes a day, don't you think? I think so, yeah, 30 minutes, definitely. So folders, and people sometimes get confused about the filtering, um, the rules, and they, they do take a little more time, but the folders can take you a few minutes and then you sort of just dump a bunch of emails into them and it's amazing how much better you feel. But also throughout the day, like you said, when emails come in, you go, oh, I got this, I know where this goes. You sort of become like the, uh, the aeronautical person at the airport. You're like, you go here, you go here. You do become a lot more efficient. So yeah, I, I give that a 30 minute one. <laughs> awesome, well, I think by, by now we've gotten about uh, two hours of savings and we're only halfway through the podcast, but we need to take a quick break. So when we come back, we are gonna talk more about life hacks, things that you can do to gain extra time in your day. We're with Lisa Montanero from lisamontanero.com and we'll be right back. When you've got it together, everyone can tell. Your confidence is obvious. Introducing Viewables.com from Smead. Use the Viewables labeling system to transform your drawer of hanging files into a tidy, organized filing system. Using the premium hanging folder tabs, see the label from the front, top, and back. It's easy. Access Viewables.com from any computer, tablet, or internet-enabled smartphone. Let's make some labels. It's free, and there's nothing to download or install. Choose the label type and format your label just the way you want. You can even add index characters or icons for distinctive filing. Set up a free Viewables cloud account and your secure login lets you save your projects for convenient access from any computer. And with Viewables multi-purpose labels, you can use one label for any type of file, including hanging folders, top tab folders, super tab folders, or oversized items like notebooks and file boxes. Upload a list of file headings and print your complete set of labels in moments. There's even a library of templates for commonly used label sets. It's never been easier to set up neat looking files that have easy to read headings and efficient color codes. Obviously organized. Viewables.com. From Smead, keeping you organized. We're back now on Keeping You Organized, uh, discovering some life hacks, ways to get more time out of your day. Now, we all only have 24 hours a day, but uh, there are ways that we can, uh, you know, shave a little here, shave a little there. And you know, the first half of the show, we've already saved uh, 30 minutes. So we're going to bring back Lisa Montanero from lisamontanero.com. And uh, uh, Lisa, uh, so we've already saved two hours. I mean, I feel like I can go out and, you know, do something fun, but I know there's more. So let's talk about some of the more common areas. You know, you work with clients, you help uh, coach on productivity. Uh, what are some of the other key areas that are real time sucks? So one of the big things that people do without realizing it, mistakenly sabotaging themselves is they combine their master project list and their daily to-do list. And it makes them feel really overwhelmed and they never get the satisfaction of crossing things off. 
And so the idea is go back to what you call your to-do list. And if it's huge and it's got 75 things on it, chances are you can never do that in one day. <laughs> so go ahead and make that your master project list of all the things that you need to do. You know, you've done that brain dump if you watch the first half of the podcast. And now you've said, okay, this is my master project list. Pull off of that three to five things only that you could reasonably accomplish in one day. And get those things done only. And people always say, John, they're like, well, what if I get those done and I want more? Go back to the master project list and grab some more. But what a great feeling to people that, to be able to cross those off and actually feel accomplished and be accomplished. So I'd say separating your master project list from your daily to-do list is become has become sort of revolutionary for a lot of my clients. And those that try it don't realize how great it is until they try it. And then they're like, wow, I didn't realize what a big deal this was that I kept thinking that I wasn't getting anything done. But they're actually realizing they're more productive than they gave themselves credit for. Now, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Some people would say that um, you might want to take that huge list of 75 items, come up with your five projects, and then maybe have a folder or a list, sub list for those and, and put them all in there. I mean, what are your thoughts on that where you maybe take some things off that big list, put them under the project list, but when you're working on a project, you know, you're only working on one of those things. Yeah, I think that's an excellent idea. And if you're using, you know, people go, what if I'm using old fashioned paper planner or something like that? You could do that. You could say, okay, these are all medical or health related projects. These are all household or home renovation or home maintenance. These are all professional or career development. So you can see that there are definite categories to everyone's to-do list. And they tend to all have similar categories, you know, school, kids, health, home, career, et cetera. And once you separate those out, you also feel a lot better, but you also become a lot more efficient. You're kind of looking at that and going, oh, well, these five can be done together. <laughs> so you kind of become, uh, you stay within one universe. So you're like, hey, let me make all the insurance calls at one time. You know, if I'm going to sit on the phone with my insurance company, rather than call them now and then next week about a different issue and then next week about the vision coverage, and I'll just get on the phone with them once. So that's actually another great life hack is to categorize your to-dos into categories or universes and then stay within that universe so that you get everything done within it. So we got we have to put a, a time uh, amount of savings on that. I mean, how many how many minutes a day can you save by doing that, do you think? I think you can save up to 15 minutes a day oh, because man. if you're not sort of willy-nilly making different calls and kind of going back to your list over and over, but you're staying within one project or one category, I think you could easily save about 15 minutes a day. All right, let's talk about calendars and scheduling things, because everybody's got a calendar and everyone schedules things. Are there some hacks that we can do with just how we schedule either appointments or things that we do uh, so that we can, you know, what I'm saying is sometimes you'll have something scheduled at, you know, nine in the morning and then something else, at, you know, there's a gap where, okay, what am I supposed to do in this gap? But is there anything with scheduling that we can look at doing? Yeah, there's two things that I would recommend. And one is um, a really great one. It's to add a time element to everything you calendar in. And nowadays with a digital calendar, you have no choice. Usually you have to pick a start time and a stop time. Stop time. Years ago, like when we used paper calendars, we would just put on there, you know, do errands starting at 10, but we had no idea when it would be over. So containerizing or compartmentalizing your time is a really powerful one. But because of that, we have to be very good at estimating how long things take. And the average person overestimates uh, the things that they don't do often and underestimate the things they do often. So they're like, oh, I'm commuting. It'll take me 20 minutes. And then I time them for a week and it takes them 38 minutes or 40 minutes, almost double. So we tend to over, uh, pardon me, underestimate things we're familiar with because we're used to doing them. Um, so time yourself for a week and figure out how long do these things really take? How long does it take me to get out the door in the morning? That could be the six minutes you're always late for work or you know, running after your kid's school bus. Uh, so how long does it take you to get out in the morning to commute? Um, how long does it take you to get ready to work? Some people have a ritual. They get their coffee, they sit down, they boot up their computer, and the next thing you know, like an hour has gone by. So I'd say to start um, giving an accurate estimate of how long it takes you to do things, and then actually picking a time element for every task. And if you could do that, uh, again, that could save you a lot of time within a day. Now, you um, know, it's, it, it's interesting you bring that up. A friend of mine, uh, he he said, you know what? I decided one of one of his resolutions for the year was is I'm going to get to every meeting 15 to 30 minutes early, like when he's meeting someone for lunch or whatever, and just spend that time 
thinking, because that's one thing he never says, I never have time to think. So he's mm-hmm. making this conscious, whenever he sets an appointment up, he actually adds an extra 30 minutes and goes early and just relaxes and thinks. So I don't know if you've heard of a technique like that before. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, there's a real name for that. It's called adding in buffer time um, or white space on your calendar. And again, the average person, you know, that's a foreign concept to them. And I have a client that's doing the same thing. She said she realized that being late stressed her out so much or the idea that she might be late and she'd be sitting there driving and, you know, the stress was driving her crazy. And so she just decided she would artificially knowing it. She, you know, it's like someone that sets their clock in advance on purpose, knowing they're going to hit the snooze. <laughs> but she does arrive about 15 to 20 minutes early for every appointment. And she now said that it makes her a much less stressful person. She's not biting people's heads off. Um, and that sort of found time or spontaneous time is when people actually do sort of their high level um, processing and thinking and dreaming and brainstorming. And those are the things we're missing out on often in our lives. And so it's actually really great time. And I think what I found is that people are allergic to it. They're like, well, why would I get to the airport that early? Why would I get to a cafe early? What will I do? Well, you'll be able to think. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's the stress is a big, is a big deal. So we only got a, a couple minutes left. Let's, let's come up with maybe one more where I think we're at about two hours and 45 minutes saved. I'd like to get over at least save 15 more minutes in a day. Uh, maybe give us one that you use. What's one of your favorite, uh, time hacks or, or productivity hacks that helps you get more done in less time really? Uh, so there are a few of them. One of my favorites, I call it stop stepping over the elephant. So everyone has this sort of big elephant in the room every day, and it's the main thing they have to get done that day. And what most people do is just step over the trunk and trip over it. I tend to focus on my highest activity, like whatever it is that I really need to get done that day. I tend to focus on it first. Um, Years ago, I was the opposite. As you know, John, I come from the law profession, and if I knew I had to write a big brief, I would do what's called clear the decks. So I would spend all this time clearing the decks of all the small activities, and I think most of us tend to do that to then be able to focus on the big activity when all those other things were done. But then I'd look down and it's three o'clock and it's due at five or four, and now I'm stressed and I'm crunched. So it's it's sort of a form of procrastination, but it's it's an efficient one. I mean, you are really getting things done, but it's not really a good use of your time. So I tell people, stop clearing the decks and start focusing on whatever that elephant is first thing. And when I switched that, um, I saw a huge change in my productivity. And then when the big thing was done, all the little things seemed like, oh, how cute, <laughs> you know, because the big thing is done. Right. So um, that's one of the big ones that I use now. It took me quite a few years to, to learn that one. Um, and then another one is I own my interruptions. And that's a big one for a lot of people. We are interrupted now in every way, shape or form, you know, text, notifications, phone calls, um, people, children, spouses at the door, friends, family, and a lot of them are well-meaning. Uh, But you have to own your interruptions. So uh, I use what's called the counter offer. So I say, you know, hey, John, I'd love to speak to you, but right now isn't good. Can you speak after three? So just go ahead and, you know, you don't have to take the interruptions when they come in. And so that's uh, that's another one that I use that I think saves a lot of time. Well, we're going to save. We've already saved over three hours now. Now it's time to wrap this uh, podcast up so we can uh, get people going on their days, letting them uh, be more productive uh, and hacking their time a little bit. But before we go, Lisa, tell us a little bit about your business, uh, who you work with and how people can get a hold of you. Sure, thanks. I work with individuals and organizations to help them be more productive. And you can find me, my online universe is lisamontanero.com. And I have a large social media presence. And I do work globally because of things like this, Uh, you know, video, Skype, Google Hangout. Uh, So yeah, if you need some help getting productive or you have an organization that needs a great workshop presenter or keynoter, um, keep me in mind. Great, well, we are done now. I wanna get out of here on time so that uh, we can get moving. Lisa, thanks again. We'll have you back again, I'm sure. And folks, now uh, go hack a couple minutes. We gave you three hours worth here. Even if you get another 15 or 20 out of your day, you're going to be moving in the right direction. And we'll see you next time on Keeping You Organized.